All right, a good Monday afternoon to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist John Dawson. This is our tropical update. Glad you found us and I've been recently informed that we've got a lot of folks in the Caribbean who are checking in with our tropical update. So I'm thinking about you. Let me put it that way and I'm glad you're checking in with us and I'm glad you're choosing Fox 26 and our platforms to sort of get some updates on what's happening out there. Barrel is still a monster of a hurricane. Uh, Cat 4 currently with maximum sustained winds at 150 miles an hour. I do want to remind you that if you're thinking more, whether you're in the Caribbean or you're along the Texas coast somewhere or anywhere in a hurricane prone area and you're thinking about preparations on being ready this season, if you find my YouTube channel, which is meteorologist John Dawson, that's going to have a lot of preparation videos with my hurricane gear tests. It really gives you some ideas on things to be thinking about for your plans. Some pretty cool products, to be honest, as well, just to kind of look at and think about. But really what we're trying to do is get you thinking about your preparations, you specifically on what you need to do, whatever's happening with you and your loved ones that need to sort of be ready for hurricane season. So again, if you're in the Caribbean and you're joining, I'm glad to hear it. You can leave a comment on our YouTube uh, comments to kind of let me know where you're checking in from. And then, as I mentioned, if you'll go to YouTube and search meteorologist John Dawson, I've got even more information I want you to be looking at to better get yourself ready for hurricane season or maybe even getting ready for barrel if in fact you're going to be somewhere near where barrel is headed. So again, thanks for kind of checking in with us. So the the, the islands here uh, that we've the windward islands are the ones that have really been able to kind of take the brunt of what is barrel at this point in time. And at this moment, I think that we're still seeing uh, at St. Lucia, I think we still have at least tropical storm force winds that are happening. And of course, as you get closer to that eye, we've got hurricane force winds that are happening and we're going to continue to kind of dive into things and take a look at what barrel is doing uh, over in the overnight hours. Barrel did an eye wall uh, re reinforcement where we kind of uh, see things sort of reestablish itself. And when that happens, what we get an opportunity to sort of stay steady on our strengthening and then it sets itself up for a little bit of enlargement as well as a re-strengthening happening after that. So that all eye wall replacement took place over in the overnight hours and or in, in more or less in the morning and is now we're, it, we were expecting perhaps even stronger winds. But the Hurricane Center's latest information does keep the wind steady at 150 miles per hour. So that is something that we're going to continue to watch. So here's that official forecast track. And as I mentioned, this is Monday afternoon update. We've got those max winds currently at 150 miles an hour. Our forecast track really hasn't deviated much. And so at this point, now that we're past these islands in the Caribbean, uh, Jamaica is going to be the next sort of closest landmass that this is going to be getting towards. I know that there are other areas that are going to have the impacts, but as far as those winds, definitely going to see some rains on some other parts of uh, of the Caribbean as this moves on through. But we're basically looking at Wednesday uh, when that is going to be uh, a major issue with that track being very close to it. You'll notice also, though, that we're going from a cat four to a cat three when we get into Wednesday in the morning and then possibly even a cat two. The intensifications are always something that uh, is a little bit more of a struggle than the actual positioning of that center uh, of the hurricane. So keep that in mind that that is having to be a little bit of a give or take a little as far as the, the strength goes. But the idea that it gradually weakens as it moves into the western part of the Caribbean is something that we're feeling fairly confident on. And that's be mainly because of some upper level winds that's going to create shear, makes it harder for that system to continue to strengthen and it'll give it an opportunity to possibly even weaken as it gets to closer to the Yucatan Peninsula. Now, once we get this far out, there's always going to be question marks. There's always going to be less confidence in the forecast. And for those of us in the United States, that is something that we're not very excited about because we'd really like to have more confidence on what's going to happen when this system gets out into the Gulf of Mexico. 
because we've been watching this track stay very flat, very far to the south in latitudes. And normally you're always expecting and just waiting for a hurricane to kind of take a, a, stre a stretch to the north, right? Well, there is a little bit of a, a lean here where we start to see that happening. And we'll just have to wait a few more days to have more confidence on how much of a turn this is going to be expected to make once we get into the Gulf of Mexico and if there will be any strengthening that would occur as well. So let's sort of dive into all that. I think this has been a good overview overall. And what I was really watching for with this 4 p.m. update was would we in fact get a little bit stronger? 150 miles an hour is where we are right now. That is a category four. And if you hadn't heard, this is the earliest on record that we have seen a category four hurricane in the Atlantic Basin. I think it was July the 8th was the previous record. Don't quote me on that, but I know basically we're in the ballpark of that uh, is what we were talking about. And this again, though, I do know is the earliest that we've seen a category four hurricane. Uh, oh, let me re rephrase with the winds of 150 miles an hour. Let, let's put it that way with at least 150 mile an hour winds. This is the earliest that we've seen that on record. And I was waiting to see if maybe it would jump up to 157 mile per hour winds and we'd have a cat five, but that did not happen. I still think perhaps it's possible with the 7 p.m. or maybe even the 10 p.m. update. But then after that, I'm not sure that that strengthening is still something that's going to be happening. So this shows that extent of our wind field where you see the red. That's going to be hurricane force winds, tropical storm force winds outside of that. And I was talking about St. Lucia. I believe this is, is where we've got St. Lucia possibly even having those tropical storm force winds. So it looks like maybe not quite happening uh, at the moment, but we're continuing to keep an eye uh, on these islands as they're now recovering. And there's notice quite a bit of open water here, not as many islands, not as much land interaction. But once we get further on, there would be something that we're looking at. I talked about once we get closer into Jamaica, that land interaction happening, that's going to be Wednesday later in the afternoon. So the steering behind this is going to be the these high pressure systems to the north that are keeping it relatively low uh, in the latitudes. So further to the south, I'm not sure why I have a three popping up here. That should be a category four a reminder category four uh, on what we've currently have with barrel these high this high pressure ridge. And then more importantly, again, for those of us in the United States, this is really the high pressure ridge that we're keeping our eye on because that is expected to weaken slightly. And that's that's why we saw a little bit of that jog to the north at the very end of that forecast comb. So the probability of hurricane force winds. This is an interesting graphic that you always like to look. I like to look at from the hurricane center. And so high probability of hurricane force winds, of course, right where we are close. But as the, the system moves out, you'll notice what are the probabilities that that would be happening of a hurricane force wind. So our winds are weakening. We talked about maybe even reaching a tropical storm before it even gets to the Yucatan Peninsula. So that is something that we're going to sort of look at a little bit. But let's watch our future cast. This is the exclusive Fox model. So if you've been looking at the GFS or the the uh, the European model, uh, those are great, of course. Those are going to be the ones that have been around for years, the staples. But our Fox model has really good success in the tropics. And that's something that I've been keeping an eye on. So any of the Fox owned television stations or the, the networks, Fox weather, uh, those are going to be using the Fox model and have that available to them. So you're not going to see that in any other source. So I'm glad you're checking in here with us to be able to have an access to this model. And of course, we are looking at and paying attention to the other models as well. You kept that going. You'll saw, see all of the rain here that's going to hit Jamaica. We possibly are going to see some of those strong winds and use less organization overall. Our Fox model, though, definitely keeps things down to the south. And you'll notice as it moves across the Yucatan Peninsula uh, and it moves into the Gulf, not wanting to take that northerly jog very much. So this is going to be one that definitely keeps it headed into the east coast of Mexico. Switching gears a little bit, but talking about the east coast of Mexico, another system that formed at 4 a.m this morning that was tropical depression three last night became tropical storm Chris right as it began to make its landfall or was over land became tropical storm Chris 
That was at 4 a.m. on Monday morning and then at 10 a.m. and I'm using central time at 10 a.m. on Monday morning. The, the National Hurricane Center said, I think we're done with Chris. So that was about a, a you know, a, a short lived tropical storm. We're now talking about remnants of Chris as it is uh, sitting over the east coast of Mexico, still looking easily at four to eight inches of rain from this point moving forward. Also in the tropics, but further out into the Atlantic, we have Invest Area 96L. This is going to be one of those systems that looks like it just wants to follow right in behind Burl. This is the current location of Burl. This is the projected models of, of Invest 96. The problem is, though, can it can become an organized tropical system and would it be very strong? I, I don't think it's going to be able to become the monster that barrel is. It might be able to keep itself organized and become a tropical system, but watch what happens here with our computer model and we're going to overlay our dust forecast on here as well. And you're going to notice that again, let's get our bearings. Here's barrel over in the Caribbean. Here's that invest area that I'm talking about. These brighter or darker orange shadings is the thicker dust. And watch what happens as it kind of gets twisted in to this area as it tries to become a tropical system and it's pulling in that dust. Well, tropical systems don't like dust. It's not helpful in its strengthening or organization. So it is fighting. It is battling all of this dust as it's trying to get itself organized. Barrel didn't have that. Barrel had plenty of warm water ahead of it, plenty of winds that cooperated with development and not a whole lot of dust to deal with. So this system behind barrel is going to be a different situation. It's not going to be still good news for all of those folks who have been dealing with barrel and all the problems that it's been causing, but we're not looking at another monster category four hurricane planning to come right in behind it, but maybe a tropical system could be coming right in behind it. And maybe if it becomes a tropical storm, it would get the name Debbie uh, if it were to be named again, questions as far as whether or not it will make that organization and get there, but it's certainly a possibility. Chris, as I mentioned, was pretty short lived, but we've checked it off the box. Now it's definitely something um, that we're not uh, going to be as concerned with. So as a review, there are three systems that the Hurricane Center are looking at, and actually we could probably check Chris off the box because it's no longer issuing advice. That 10 a.m. update from the Hurricane Center is the last advisory that we were expecting from the National Hurricane Center. So we've got the area of Invest, which we've been talking about recently, and you can see on that satellite imagery, it's not looking healthy. And then we've got Barrel, which is still looking very healthy. I just want to show uh, Barrel one more time what it's been doing over the last 12 hours uh, moving past Barbados and the rest of the islands there and now clearing the islands somewhat and that again is going to be good news as it gets to a little bit of a stretch here where it won't have as much interaction with land. You can still see all of the rain that's getting kicked off of that. That's definitely going to be causing some problems, but as we move through the next several days, those dangerous and powerful winds will not really have a whole lot of interaction and we're watching that weakening to start happening primarily on Wednesday and then it's Wednesday afternoon when it gets closer to Jamaica. We get into the Yucatan Peninsula, hopefully only a tropical storm. And then as we've talked about, we're going to see a little bit of a curve to the north, but how far to the north, how much of a curve we will have some time to wait and see that happen. I talked about the area of invest, the National Hurricane Center officially giving this now a 50% chance over the next seven days. So this orange shading here is sort of that seven day possibility, that time period. So where we see Bur Burl barrel right now is sort of where we could see this system in seven days. And right now the Hurricane Center giving it that 50% chance of developing. So as we've talked about, it has less uh, less opportunity and less confidence than what barrel did because of all those things that it was continuing to fight. And this is, like I said, where barrel currently is category four hurricane 120 miles. Now I haven't talked about the wind, the speed of this. The movement is still pretty quick. That's something else that this other system behind is not going to be doing. This is moving at 21 miles an hour. So the whole system is moving at 21 miles an hour to the west northwest. 
this system would be moving slower. It's not going to be as quickly moving across the area. All right, I think I got you updated on the tropics. As I mentioned at the beginning, if you're just sort of catching in on the live version here, go to YouTube, search meteorologist John Dawson. I've got a lot of ideas and preps for you to stay prepared for hurricane season and really all year long. It's emergency preparations in general. And otherwise, we're here every day. We will keep you updated. We'll expect to see you again tomorrow for another tropical update.